Hi, I'm Brian Trenchard-Smith and this is Trailers from Hell. All filmmakers feed off each other's ideas, it is the nature of art. When George Lucas finally met Akira Kurosawa, he acknowledged that aspects of the Hidden Fortress had influenced him when writing the original Star Wars. A princess on the run, aided by two quarrelsome peasants, became the basis for Princess Leia and the bumbling robots R2-D2 and C-3PO. Perhaps Star Wars Jedi Knights were a nod to Jedi Geki, the Japanese name for period dramas of which The Hidden Fortress is a fine and innovative example. Kurosawa in turn acknowledged his debt to John Ford, whose influence is evident throughout his samurai films. For the first time, Kurosawa chose to shoot in 235 Anamorphic, which was just being adopted by Japanese studios. Here is the 1958 trailer in Toho Scope. The Hidden Fortress delivers Kurosawa's trademark blend of dynamic action, wry humor, and insight into character. He was a star director in Japan, so the studio incorporated behind-the-scenes footage into the trailer. The scope format enhances Kurosawa's flair for long takes, deep focus composition, and sweeping camera moves. This shot, in which the two luckless peasants stumble into a column of prisoners and are swept along with them to the enemy castle, is just one of several epic tableaus. This was Toshiro Mifune's 11th film for Kurosawa. He plays the general assigned to get the princess and her gold through enemy lines. But the story is not told from the point of view of the aristocrats as was the norm. Instead, we see it through the eyes of two comic greedy bunglers at the very bottom of the food chain. They bemoan their lot, constantly bicker like a Japanese version of Laurel and Hardy, and at every opportunity try to steal the gold, but are constantly undone by their own incompetence. The grandeur of Kurosawa's staging is greatly aided by the music score from Matsaru Sato. He would go on to write music for 300 features, 18 in one year alone, becoming the Japanese film composer equivalent of Italy's Ennio Morricone. Kurosawa rejected every actress on the Toho roster. He wanted an inexperienced girl with a fresh, princess-like dignity, yet the intensity of a samurai's daughter. Hundreds auditioned. He picked 20-year-old Mizo Uehara. He was taken with her elegant beauty and what he called her miraculous eyes. In fact, he personally placed a big picture of Elizabeth Taylor by her mirror in the makeup room before her makeup test. She does well conveying her growth from naive princess to worthy ruler as she experiences, like in The Prince and the Pauper, the plight of her oppressed subjects firsthand. In the crucial roles of the thieving peasants, Kurosawa chose two prolific character actors, Minoru Chiaki and Kamatari Fujiwara. <laughs> He'd used Chiaki in eight previous films, and Fujiwara appeared in more Kurosawa films than any other actor. Like John Ford, Kurosawa had a stable of reliable supporting players he would cast over and over. Like all Kurosawa's pictures, it was expensive. A 12-week shoot started at the end of May, but was plagued by bad weather. He had to change locations when three separate typhoons tore all the leaves off the trees. Kurosawa would not compromise. He finally wrapped on December the 11th and because he edited throughout the shoot, delivered a completed movie in stereo in time for the December 27th release date. It was a smash hit, grossing a million dollars in Japanese yen. But its cost diminished the profit margin. Toho executives, hoping to control his perfectionism, good luck with that, decided that Kurosawa should no longer make films totally funded by the studio, but form a partnership company and contribute a proportion of the budget. The Hidden Fortress won the Silver Bear at the Berlin Film Festival, but snooty American critics expecting heavy drama from Kurosawa did not relate to a light-hearted romp and damned it with faint praise. However, young filmmakers like George Lucas were inspired by the combination of humor and spectacle.